these uh, PVC flanges that I got from the hardware store. They're going to fit right over top. And uh, I'm just going to use this window silicone to uh, prevent any leaks. And I'm just going to screw it on there with some random old screws I had lying around. There you go, getting the inside and the outside edge. It's going to be a super pain in the ass if this thing leaks, so I'm using an awful lot of silicone. There you go. Once that's all screwed in, I'm going to caulk around all of these edges. Now, as you can see, I've gone and uh, put a pretty thick bead of silicone around the edges of both of these. Um, that's pretty much all this is. It's just a tote with two holes in it. Pretty simple. Um, the only thing left to do is to allow it to dry a little bit. We're going to put the, uh, you'll notice I have an adapter here, uh, the four inch the four inch size over here is a little bit too difficult to put the flex hose on, it just it's a pain in the ass. So I put the uh, three inch reduction on there and then it slides right on. I can tape it on with uh, ducting tape and it's good to go. So this is the inlet side where the um, can fan will be blowing into. And this here side will be the side that has the, uh, the hardline PVC coming out of it and then uh, angling into my tent, supplying the tent with humidity. So, uh, once those lines are in place, it's pretty much a, a, a complete unit now. As, uh, as I, I wasn't aware of this before, however, when putting your uh, fogger inside of this system, you don't want to drill a hole through the top and then have the wire going through the top because as the uh, level of the water changes, what it's going to do is create tension on the cord. So, as you can see here, this is what it looks like. The electrical cable comes out of the top now. As you could imagine, as the water level sinks, pinching this onto the lid is going to create tension, which is going to cause problems for your electrical system there, and your, it's going to cause your fogger to fail. So, not only that, it's going to lift it a little bit out of the water, and uh, your discs aren't going to be wet. It's going to it's just going to malfunction over time. You're going to ruin it, which is what I did with my last unit. So word to the wise, don't do that. I'm going to be drilling a hole into the side here and then fishing it through the side. That way there's no um, issue with the lid. Uh, on top of that, not only that, when you take your lid off to fill with water to clean off or whatever, um, the same thing is going to happen. You're going to be pulling on that electrical cord, which is definitely not what you want to do. So when I cut this hole or drill this hole in the side to allow the um, power cord to go through, the largest bit that I have is a half inch. Um, as you can see here, the, the plug for this fogger is a little bit bigger than that. Not a big deal. I'll just, uh, you know, waggle it around a little bit, make the hole bigger. Obviously that's going to cause a leak if left alone because the diameter of this cable is far less than a half inch. The workaround I'm going to uh, use is this plug that came out of the lid from the hole saw. That's going to be what the cable is going through. I'm just going to make a slit here and then uh, use this as a patch over the hole with silicone and that should prevent any leaking. As you can see I got the uh, half inch plus hole drilled into the side up by the handle and it's just enough space to fit this plug through. You can just jam it in there. There it goes. Now as you can see too much space but uh, as I mentioned before I got this thing here I'm going to fish this through so it connects on there and put a, another shitload of silicone on here to seal up this hole and patch it up so that nothing leaks out of there and she'll be good to go before I mount the 
uh, foggy unit in here, I went and washed all of the shavings out and all of the dust and whatever was in there when it was uh, sitting on the shelf at Lowe's. So once this goes in there and I put the silicone on, it's not coming back out. So you're going to want to make sure it's nice and clean before you do all that and then let it all sit and dry for at least 24 hours probably. Um, I think it said that it's water ready in half an hour, but pff, you know, instructions. The patch has been put onto the line, one times shitload of caulking applied. And then another generous bead going around the outside and uh, to cover this cut here. So that should keep everything in place. All I got to do now is uh, just wait for this all to dry up. Uh, tomorrow I'll be putting it into the tent and uh, show you guys how this works out. The lid is on. Flex hose is running to the can fan. All I got to do now is... Uh, Insert this PVC, it's going to go up to this elbow, I'm just going to bang that down with a rubber mallet. Uh, in the tent, I have T5 LEDs that are zip tied to the crossbars. Uh, you can see where the PVC comes through the tent along the top, it's got holes drilled in the side and there's just no cap on the end so it's just shooting uh, fresh air and humidity everywhere. Um, I've got a few measly blocks in here just to dial this tent in. As you can see, I've got some oysters that are pinning. These are second flush. Uh, my last ultrasonic fogger died just after the first flush, so it's time to get this thing back up and going. On the bottom of my tent, I have this washroom ceiling fan. It's 110 CFM. This is what I'm using for my exhaust. It pipes out the top of my tent through that hole there. Now, this is going to be on a speed controller. It's just going to be on medium. It's not going to be running full speed or else I wouldn't be able to keep a humid environment in here. But this is going to help with regulating my um, humidity. That thing, that system out there, it pumps, a, it pumps in a lot of humid uh, air. It's got it up to 100 percent humidity very easily so I want to keep it more around 80 between 80 and like 86 and so this exhaust fan helps me to do that not only that it's going to exhaust spores I've got this pipe coming out and it goes across the hallway and into um, a washroom where I've ducted into the ceiling fan duct work there so it's going outside that way the whole system is plugged into this cycle timer well not the whole system but this uh humidification system is plugged into the cycle timer and I have it set for two minutes on and five minutes off which gives me about eight exchanges per hour. And this is the speed controller that I have my exhaust fan set into. I'm going to have it up here on medium. Now that it's running you can see the fog coming out. I'm going to let it run for a few minutes and get this up from uh, what it's at now to uh, around 86 hopefully so so it's only run through three cycles so far and you can tell that there's a huge difference in here already the whole system is now up and running things will be going smoothly from here on out now that I know uh, you know what to avoid um, the reason why I have my cycle timer set for two minutes on is because I want as much fresh air exchange as possible while maintaining the humidity in there. Um, I'm going to have some blues in there soon. They're notorious for requiring a lot of fresh air. So that's why I've done that. Also, as far as my uh, T5 lights are concerned, I have them set up to uh, a light timer with a 12-12 light dark cycle. So that is that. As you can see there's a lot of humidity coming out of there and this tent keeps it locked in pretty well so as this thing runs for a little while it's going to cool down right now it's 21 C I expect that once the uh, fresh air and the humidity keep cycling through here this is in an air-conditioned room so this will probably be more like 18 degrees 17 18 degrees Celsius so that's how you build a humidification system for a fruiting tent